If we are to rule the world of Minecraft, I need blaze cakes. Juicy blaze cakes. But we're not quite there yet. But th we will be this week. Grand Chasm Ministries is back up and fully operational. We have a new rail off to the side that collects wood from a train, splices them into planks, and then exports them into all of our hungry blaze. Right, little guys, do you feel good? All of them together provide us with 98,000 SU. Whatever that means, there's something energy. And this something energy is used throughout the entire base. Although, we also have the problem where I built the base too wide, so if I move too far, chunks get unloaded. So every once in a while, we gotta come back and reboot the system, and I don't really have an easier way of going about doing this yet than just, ah, okay, perfect, everything's spinning again. I don't remember what this is for. It's for something. One of the problems presenting itself to us in our quest for expansion is this. It's great in the sense that it produces tons of resources, but it's really hard to navigate, and I forget where a bunch of the resources are all the time, and we're playing Minecraft, not a spaghetti western. And this is a whole lot of spaghetti. And I'd love to go about fixing the whole problem. It's just that we also need more belts, and we make belts from dried kelp. And if you look in my inventory, that's currently all of the dried kelp I have left. Oh, but Spencer, there is no dried kelp. In the yes, that's the, <laughs> that's the problem. One ticket to Tinkletown, please. Oh, and would you look at that? We've completed the basics of the rail system. It looks like a pile of junk right now, but the important thing is it works, and we can now get anywhere we want within the server that the rail station goes to. Still haven't really done all the tunnels yet. Hello, Tinkertown. And look at this, this will slow down. Please slow down. Oh, thank God, okay, <laughs> sometimes they crash. I wanted to come back to Tinkertown first because I was really hoping that somebody on the server here is selling kelp, dried kelp, or normal kelp, or belts. It'd be better if they were just selling belts. Unless there's other recipes we need dried kelp for. Oh, that's right, we need them for brass tunnels and all sorts of different things. Okay, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we want dried kelp. Spot claimed by Casper's Bits and Bobbles. Huh. So nobody is selling kelp, so that means we've got to build a kelp farm. I already have a spot in mind. Not that the location we're going to is important at all for any reason whatsoever. Wink. And as for the location on the map, well, we're heading north. So far north, we're passing by things beautiful you've never out. Ah, beautiful you've never seen before. Now we've got to climb this hill and then climb back down the hill. Is there a bee out in the middle of the ocean? There's two of them! There's three of them! What are you guys doing out here? Safe travels. Yeah, they're, they're screwed. And then we sail some more until we come to this. An island in the middle of the ocean. Hello, horse. There's already residents here. Perfect. Free workers I don't have to bring over myself. I just thought this would be a really cool place to build a kelp farm as well as build a resort. You know, like another one. Because <laughs> we didn't build it at the tree farm yet. We might do it here instead. One thing is I don't really know how to build a kelp farm. So we're going to have to try a few different things. Dude. Yes! Oh, spells. We can actually kind of talk about them a little bit now that the latest lore video came out. There is Ars Novo in the Neverbound SMP. However, Casper's the only one able to use the stuff. She can teach others as a part of kind of the lore stuff that we have going for this server, but unless she specifically teaches someone how to use the magic, she's the only one capable of using it. And you got your first little sneak peek of it in the last lore video, episode 21. If you haven't seen it, you definitely should check it out. First things first, for our own belts, we're going to need our own kelp. But it should be enough to at least get us started and ready to go. But while the kelp's smelting, this is my idea for the farm. We're gonna do three off the coast here. We're gonna lower them all down into the water, and then we're gonna add some retaining walls around the outside edges and leave an opening in the middle so that it looks as if they were built to stop the idea of waves coming in and flowing through, but still so that water could come in and fill in the area. So it was a little safer for doing kelp farm. The durability of my tools did not last as long as I was hoping they would. We're nowhere near finished digging all this stuff out. I don't know if I have any more lavium or hepatism. You know, swimming's been a pain going back and forth to the island. If only there was a better solution. Oh, <gasps> wait, what's this? A track. Why would we want to ride a train out here to the middle of nowhere? Oh, could it be that we've got a Oh my god, it looks so stupid. <laughs> I made a boat, and it works. Clearly he's a captain, right? That's clearly a captain's hat. I don't know how we got a boat working in Minecraft, but you know, it's... <laughs> Be careful, it's taking on a little bit of water. But I got lazy, so we only put one way, we only put one sail on it, so. <laughs> That's so stupid. All right, well, we're gonna go sailing. I'll see you guys on the island shortly. I'm getting a little concerned that maybe I should have put seats on it. I'm afraid I'm gonna get thrown off and then I'm gonna have to swim the rest of the way because I don't have a boat on me. Oh god, oh come on. Oh come 
<laughs> you can see how we did it. Clearly, there's no track down there. That's just the underwater ambiance of the underwater. This is coming out of your paycheck, horse. What are the... Whoa! <laughs> that is so cool! It's a boat! What... What is that reflecting off of oh, it? Oh, it's just because it's graphically weird. What is a pirate's favorite letter? Welcome to my new island. What is a pirate's favorite letter? <laughs> I don't want to answer. <laughs> just whether I give the right answer or the wrong answer, it's still the wrong answer. Oh, oh, get back on the boat. <laughs> get back on the boat. Well, Spen, what's that? What is a pirate's favorite letter? <sighs> what? That's not how the joke goes. Oh, sorry. R. <laughs> no, the C be his first love. Spen. What? What is a pirate's favorite letter? Uh, is it the C? No, it be R. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you were the first person I showed this to. <laughs> this is. This... <laughs> well, there's the general idea of it. We got two chests, and our portable interface connector goes on the inside there for the loop, and it just goes around and it'll harvest all the kelp. The bottom level is gonna be where we plant the kelp, so every time it comes up, it's gonna break this. And I wanted to have this all just underneath the water because I thought it would look a little nicer as it's spinning around. This central windmill piece is gonna change. I think we're gonna. Oh my God! There's the boat. <laughs> I also think I figured out why it's getting the little graphical things on it. Lighting underwater works differently than up above, and I think the boat counts as being underwater, and that's why the lighting gets all weird with the shadows, because it tries to light as if it is underwater. I kind of want to do a bit of a frame dome over the top of it, and then have the windmill maybe on the top, or maybe have windmills separated and maybe something connecting from underneath. I haven't decided yet, but the windmill for sure isn't going to stay there forever. Something I would like to mention, I didn't actually know about this until uh, I was messing around with this stuff earlier, but the windmills, there's actually a few different options on here where you've got movement mode only placed when anchor destroyed only placed near initial angle and always placed when stopped i didn't realize there were those options on this there's so many windmills i need to go back and readjust now because i love the one here where it's only placed when anchor is destroyed so that means if this stops look at that it doesn't snap into place it just stays where it's at if i'd known about that in the tree farm that would have solved all the times i had all those logs that kept getting stuck and trapped on the tree farm itself never again are we doing another kelp farm i had 50 deluxe cheeseburgers now we're down to 18 because the amount of underwater swimming and stamina we had to use up plus i didn't take into consideration that the kelp might grow faster than the thing goes around when a kelp grows taller than that thing it when it breaks it the kelp floats on the surface and i'm worried it's going to build up over time and it's going to be a problem but that's a future spencer's problem so he can deal with it i think a lot of this is going to get changed into a dock or some sort of walkway and we'll put some buildings up here and we'll make it like a cool little sea town and you know we'll add that into all the other things that we want to be doing but i haven't finished doing it because we just start more projects finishing projects is hard and then i also put these and i kind of like the looks of it the idea here is the water can still flow in from the ocean you know little fishies can come in i don't know why the fishes would want to go in there but they can if they want and the idea is this stops like the bigger waves from coming through and disrupting things i looked up some pictures of kelp farms i don't know oh, look there's some fish right there hello little friends how are you so who who knows? I don't even know what I was just saying. The idea is if a storm came through, it's supposed to help break up the water. Although I guess these should be taller for that then, shouldn't they? But eh, whatever. That's a, again, that's a that's a future Spencer's problem. As soon as this comes around, it connects up, and you can see the kelp starts to flow out, and then it'll come all the way down here and store itself in this container for now. We just don't have a way of moving it yet. I'm praying this works because we are completely out of food, but I think we're pretty darn close. You can kind of see it a little bit. I've got a second boat now set up. All of the kelp is now flowing into the boat. I think. A full vault can hold 1600. I set it so that once it detects it's got over a thousand or there's cargo inactivity for a minute, then it'll go and move on. These will keep pumping away, storing stuff, and it gets delivered into this guy. I really like how it turned out. Look at that, and we got our little dude driving it. Again, we'll have to figure out a way to deal with these graphical glitches. The only solution I could think off of the top of my head is we build a small tunnel around the track, because I think water being on the track wheels is causing this whole thing to be considered underwater. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh my God, that scared the crap out of me. But now this comes on right on over here where we're going to have to go and light up some stuff and get a proper thing set up for this. But you can kind of see under... Actually, we can go hop. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Oh, oh, working underwater. It's been a while since we've slept. And great, we are out of food. Oh no, this is bad. Oh no, this is very bad. No! Can we make it to the train? I don't think we can! Oh, we're gonna die! 
<laughs> Come on, you little turds. <laughs> oh, I thought we were done for. All right, I need to go to Tinker Top Mountain. I need some more food. Onwards, my good sir. Someday we'll have a name tag for you. The snow suitable path to the next scheduled destination can be found. Awesome. What about station one? Awesome. We gotta go fix some tracks. Wait, the cat's hissing at the phantoms. Are you scaring them away? <gasps> oh my god, phantoms are afraid of cats! And if you were to look over here, we now have a kelp train. I, I know I'm using a very standard look for most of the trains. It's gonna change eventually. Just for now, I just, we gotta get the resources moving so we can make stuff. But it comes right on in here and we currently have all of our kelp coming in and smelting. So we're soon gonna have tons of dried kelp, which means we now get to start on what we've been waiting for these last few weeks. Hauling these resources out of here. Slowly but surely. We're also incredibly far from spawn. We are all most 2,000 blocks. Although we've encountered our first problem, and I don't want the tracks. Next time we do this, we'll have to make a filter that doesn't allow tracks to go through it. Now the question is, do we drop this off at Grand Chasm Industries, or do we process it all down here in the nether? Also, while we were waiting, this guy sat in the seat, and I really want to keep him here, but I don't have any seats on me, so he has to die. I'm so sorry. I was super excited to have all this set up in the nether. We were gonna make all the blaze cakes. We were gonna crush everything down here and then transport it up to the overworld. I got all this stuff set up. I just spent the last couple hours building it. And then I realized that I can't pump water into this from the nether. So I think the only way to get this working is we now have to pump water into the tanks of trains and then bring them down here and store them in tanks so that we can get this running. I don't even know how long the water will last in the tanks, but in a perfect world, this is gonna produce the lava that gets stored into here and then it's gonna get spurted out into this, into a bucket. The bucket's gonna go around, the arm is going to grab it and then it places in here. And we don't have to have this very fast because I turns out lava lasts really long. So realistically, we could have set something like this up in the overworld and then we don't even need the blaze cakes. But we're too committed now, we're making blaze cakes. I don't know if this is the best decision, but it's the decision we went with. Three trains full of, <laughs> full of water. And now we just gotta take it back to the nether. I'm really hoping the water's gonna stay. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's flowing into the, it's flowing into the tanks. I just don't know if three tanks is gonna be enough, nor do I know how long it's gonna last. Because something I've never had to test before is the heat of the boiler and if that has any effect on how fast the water gets used up because we've always just had to detach to water source blocks. So the setup isn't 100% perfect, but it's working pretty good so far. Our train comes in and parks along this line. All the water is then pulled in through these pipe systems into these three containers. We're probably gonna have to figure out a better way to get water because we're not getting enough to be able to keep this going for our extremely long term, I don't think. But the water is pumped into each individual of these. We got two buffers and then it does get moved into here. I do have a setup done so that at any time I want, I can shut off the water, so that'll stop this, and then this will deactivate. We also have another shutoff right here, so that when this cargo container has any sort of items in it, this stockpile switch deactivates its redstone signal. If we didn't have anything in here, this redstone signal would come on and it would shut off the pumps here, so that we could then stop everything from wasting all of our water. I don't ever know if it's gonna come in handy. I think we're gonna spend more time moving water anyway, so we might. this might end up just be a complete waste of time. But to set up something like this in the nether, I think it'd be really cool. Right now, it's just getting the basics going, and then once we have a system that works, we'll come back through and we'll clean everything up so that it looks nice. Right here, our train cart is slowly emptied into this container. Everything then goes from the container onto this conveyor belt where it splits into two different possible ways. The first one being up here to the grinders and the second one over here to be turned into bricks. Those are pretty much the only two things Netherrack is gonna get used for. You can see we got the filter on there for bricks and it's a little hard to see, but it is turned into cinder flour. I don't have a plan for how we're gonna unload that stuff yet. Actually, I have a pretty good idea. This only pulls out netherrack, because originally we were gonna take this and send it up into the overworld to go and dump off all the other resources. What if we had this do everything? What if this shows up here, the train signal says, keep unloading stuff until there's no more activity. Then when the train's done here, it moves up to a second station, just a little bit farther ahead, where the cinder flower and bricks will start getting loaded directly back into this train. We'll just have it so that train sits at the second station until there's no longer any activity. And then when it's done, it goes to the overworld, it empties out all of its stuff, and then it just goes and parks down over there waiting for new resources. And then we can get it all done with a single train. The only problem is, is it might take a little bit of time for it to process all this stuff, but if the lava buckets last as long as they do, I'm assuming that the blaze cakes are gonna last even longer. This thing's incredibly slow, but it's, it's incredibly efficient. But we won't know until we have blaze cakes being made. 
So we got our bricks that will come up out of here if we want them. I've attached a clutch here so we can turn it off because I don't want to collect bricks right now. Uh, I'd rather this just fill up and then eventually just be completely full and then everything else just goes towards our cinder flower, which you can see is slowly coming in through here now. So that's stacking into this. We actually locked out really well with how this all connects together. The next step is going to be getting the water completely automated, which is simple. All we got to do is throw an animal into the front of the train and get its train schedule up and going. And then it's basically just the same thing for this one, except we also have to get a drop off location for the, oh and we also have to get a location for where we're gonna store all our cinder stuff because wait what all do we still need for blaze cakes all we have to do is put lava into the blaze cake base the lava that's easy but we need to get sugar and eggs oh we don't have a chicken farm so we still have a little bit of automation left to go I thought for sure we'd be getting blaze cakes done today but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case